Howdy y'all, Lois here. Welcome back to the Bonsai Studio. Today, I brought over to the studio my dwarf gardenia. Something that I pulled from nursery stock from one of the big, uh, big box stores here in town. I thought it had great potential. It's got tons of branches everywhere, as you can no doubt see. So previously we've talked about repotting and pruning. Well, here's another step of bonsai that some people may not know about, and it's the wiring. Now we can wire branches using either aluminum or copper. And in this case, I'm gonna be using aluminum. And it's this wire, you wrap it around and you can then shape the branch. And after a few months, it's sometimes some, some plants take years before it sets. Depends on how quick it grows. I've never worked with this tree type of tree before, so I wanted to know how, if it would back bud. There is a little area where I cut a branch just to see if I'd get some back budding. I cut it, as you can see right there, and not only did it back bud, it get another back bud way back here. How about that? Isn't that something? So I know that if I cut this, these trees, we're gonna get some good back budding as long as there's a node. As long as there's a node, I think it's going to back bud. So we're gonna do some pruning here first and then I'm gonna wire this up. So let's make a big decision here. We're gonna give it a good cut. Where are we at here? There we go. So I'm thinking we get rid of this whole entire subdivision right here. We're gonna make a big decision. Let's just go ahead and do it. What do you think? All right, forgive me. Oh, look at that. I just took off just crazy amount. Oh boy, that can hurt you. That can hurt you. We're never getting that back. Now we can probably change up the front of this tree eventually because I think now we've got this now. I mean, look at that. That looks like a great front of that tree. Uh, it's got some great character. Once that thing heals up, um, I should have brought some of my um, cut paste. But yeah, take a look at that there. Doesn't that look like a cool front of that tree? It, uh, see, we can get rid of, get some of these up. Maybe even cut them out. But that looks like a, now like a haunted tree. That bifurcation really stands out. And that would be a nice, that cut will be a nice feature once it heals over. Okay, great. Let's continue on here. I'm gonna get rid of this branch right here. It's just too much and it needs to go. What do you think? All right, there it is. It's a long one. We can, uh, you can give that to your lady. Say, here you go, my sweetie. Moving on, moving on. I think first and foremost, we get this most bottom west, bottom most one out and it sticks way far out over here. And we'll go ahead and get that out right there. Great, great, great. Moving up, we've got another. So it seems that this tree, it will trifurcate a lot, which means it'll have its main stem, main branch, and then two branches come out from that main stem. So. That's what we're dealing with with this. It's, it's what it seems like it wants to do. It naturally wants to do that. There, that's why it's got a ton of these branches everywhere. Now, if we look at this trunk line, it comes up, bifurcates, we took care of that trifurcation. Now we're up on this one. Now, I think this is our main. We'll continue this as our main. This actually should be a secondary. This should be our main back here because it's got the apex, the top of the tree. But you see, we've got it coming up here. We've got a trifurcation right there and right here. This one's sort of sticking in the same area. It's going to, it's going to puff up eventually. So we should get rid of one of these three here. Uh, then again, right on top of it, another trifurcation and then another trifurcation. Now I think any trifurcation that we see that it's got a branch that's going downwards, I think we should get rid of that one right off the bat. I can see that one with this back one here. 
um, but we will get to that in a second. So between these first three at this node, we got something straight up. I like this one on the side, and then this one kind of goes straight up to the back. I think we can get rid of this one that's a little bit weaker. Yeah, this one right here is a little weaker. It's a little smaller. I did like the movement of it, but it's a little late for that now, isn't it? Ain't it? Okay, great. We'll continue up that path there. So now we've fixed that. Now I've got another bifurcation where we can pick one or another here. Um, let's see here. We pick that one. And remember we can cut we can cut some of these if we want. So going up here, fix that. Oh, let's see. So I've got this one here. We got one, two, and three. This one back here sticks way back here and sort of is hiding. So maybe one of these two. This one is pointed towards the front. This one's kind of up. Let's see, which one should we pick? I think we should get the one that's going straight up. And we're gonna do that, making a quick decision. Okay, moving up the branch again. We've got another bifurcation here. So I think we'll get rid of all the weak ones that I can see here, just that are small and a little bit of budding there. We don't need that one. And I think we'll go with that one there. A lot of bifurcation here, get rid of that. Great. That cleans up that branch pretty well. Oh yeah. And so we can start seeing the development of the branches once we get the wiring going. We'll have it all sprawled out and sticking up there. Yeah. And so I have this long in right here that doesn't quite fit the right size. I think if I go ahead and cut it right at the node, when we cut this, there'll be a node right here. And remember we talked about die back. We don't wanna cut it right at a node. Now imagine a node is a knuckle and that's where plants start to grow out of nodes, right? If we cut the node at the node, it's gonna die back to the next node. So if you cut it right at that knuckle, it's gonna die down to this knuckle right here. Yes, it is a knuckle. And what we wanna do is cut between the nodes. We wanna keep the bottom node, that's the one we wanna keep. So we wanna bring up, find the middle of the next node and give it plenty of room for dieback. You can even cut under that last node so that you have a ton of uh, room for dieback, just in case. Uh, you never know. So in that instance, we're going to find this node. I can already see a little bud growing on it, so I know it's ready to pop. I'm gonna give it a little snip, and we'll give it a wire, because that's gonna be growing. That's gonna be having one of these little florets right here, these little foliage clumps. It's gonna happen, trust me. Trust me, it's gonna happen. Okay, so that's sorted out. We're gonna go to the back of this tree and find a bifurcation. Uh, it's not too bad, except we've got this long stretchy guy right here. And I know I've been wanting to get rid of him for a while, so we'll get rid of him. Goodbye. Okay, moving up the tree, we've got a bifurcation. And I'm gonna get rid of one of them. It's going to be the one that's not growing towards the middle of the tree. Yeah, okay. I've got this long guy right here. We need to figure out what to do with him eventually, but I think you know, he's, got a, he's got a bud growing. He's got a little buddy. So he's got a bud right there. I'm gonna give that a good cut. give a lap a little wire too. Now this looks like I can bend it pretty good without without it even attempting to feel like it's snapping. And that's good because you're gonna be able to create some really interesting movement in these trees. We're almost there, we're almost there. It's important to get this pruning stuff done and get your idea of what you want done first. Otherwise you may just be cutting around and if you follow the rules, I think you can pretty much accomplish something. If you follow, I don't know if they're rules, but guidelines, 
things that are growing on the bottom of the branches you want to get rid of i mean those kind of things this particular or branches that stick down which this looks like it may do you just go ahead and eliminate those threats i don't know if they're threat <laughs> make it sound like it's a like they're enemies but no they're not they're just uh they're just not part of the design and so uh the lucky part is that you can take all these and you can attempt to uh grow them you can you can plant them in with some rooting hormone and you can make several of these trees in the future so we're going to get some wiring going here so i've got my aluminum wire this is 1.5 millimeter uh and it's a nice it's a nice uh gauge it's, it's not too thick it's not too thin it's definitely going i only will need one strand around and it will it will definitely hold its shape and so when we wire branches, we don't just wire one branch at a time. We take it, we find an opposing branch with it, and we will wire these two together in a way. Matter of fact, I want to get rid of that. Um, we will wire two at, at the same time. Yeah. So let's get to this front part here. I'm going to get enough that's going to wrap around this first bifurcation. And so what I'll do is I just sort of eyeball it. I think that's enough. We can always cut, we can always cut more or you can always cut more, but you can never get any more if you run out. So, and luckily wire is pretty cheap. So what I'm gonna do is wrap this around the middle of where these two branches meet. And I'm just gonna get one little wrap going because I wanna, that'll hold and sort of anchor what I'm doing here. The next one I'm going to get, let me see what camera angle works best here. Yeah. There it is. Now I've got this branch. And now when we wire, you're not wiring uh, like wraps and coils, although you're making a coil, but think of this as like 45 degree angle, maybe 55 degree. You want a nice long slope and it's just to give it a structure, a wire frame. You don't need to do this very hard, starting up, going down and then pinching it. And as you can see there, it's wrapped. It's loosely, it's not very loosely wrapped, but it's there to hold its shape. And now if I wanted to move this I can shape it in any direction I want, which is the point of what we're doing today. So now we're moving on to this side. Now that we have one side done, we will wrap and try not to trap any leaves in its, uh, in its uh, coil. And sometimes you don't make it all the way to the top, but in this case I did. And now see, I could, I could move this around, do all sorts of cool stuff to it. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this just yet. We're going to finish up wiring. You don't want this thing to look like a big jumbled mess of wire either. So there's a whole art in wiring these things real nice and neat. You don't expect to see that over here though. I'll do my best. I'm definitely not trying to rush it. I definitely want to make sure I'm not crushing anything. Um, you don't. You want your foliage to be out in the open. That's sort of the reason why we're doing this wiring so that we can make sure that it gets plenty of sunlight. Okay. I like to bring it down a little bit and then just bring it up at the ends, but kind of give it a nice curve and then get them to jumble together. Give them a little bit of extra movement so that we don't have just straight lines. You know, you want it, you want everything to have some nice curvature to it. Motion is what you're gonna hear when it comes to bonsai, the motion. You want it to convey, convey motion, which yes, you absolutely do. So make sure you take that and imagine it blowing in the wind or something. Matter of fact, they've got techniques, different styling technique called windswept where you can make it look like it's just been 
swept by the wind its whole life and that's sort of how it was wired through through uh, being beaten up by the wind so it just always is looking like it's gone through a windstorm like that you know you make them all go one way it's quite fascinating I think that's looking great. That is looking really cool. Where it's a bit barren right here. And I think once we have these guys grow out a little bit, let me just point it back to where you can see what I'm talking about. Once these guys grow out, we can have them fill in this empty space. But right now, it's kind of an inviting area. Like it makes you makes you feel like you want to go over there and build a house or something, a little clubhouse in there. You know, that's what I used to always see these trees. I'd be like, man, that is one perfect tree for a little clubhouse. What'd you do in that clubhouse? That's none of your business. Especially, you know, asking a teenage aged boy, oh boy, tell you what, do not ask him what he do in that thing. Cause it's going to be collecting baseball cards. I guarantee you, that's it. That's it. little bit of final touches here. I think we can just go ahead and call that complete for now. Although it's never, this work's never done. We're gonna place this in a shady spot to recover from the pruning. Keep it watered. It's a little weird right there. It's okay, I'll do some more fun with it. But as you can see, we've got the idea of how to enhance your tree. So right there, it's a little weird. What is that? Let's see, maybe I can bend, bend it a little more there. Maybe stick it out. Yeah, see how that shape changed the whole idea? Over here, bring it down a little more. Twist it up, look at that. We don't want that straight line there, so you just give it a little bit of a bend. Yeah, and it just looks like it pulls itself out, and, and because it wants, you ever, you ever watch a plant, you don't ever watch it, but you see that it's always pointing towards the sun. That's why when you have trees growing on mountains, they're not just growing out of the mountain, they're growing up towards the sun. It's, it's kind of the way it works there, huh? This little bugger here. He's a little bit of a nuisance. I'm probably gonna get rid of him. Yeah, but you know, let him hang out for the for a while. All right, we'll pretty much call this one complete. Although I'll probably be trying to change up and figure out where I want all these branches to go. And you know, whenever you do see it before it sets, you can still adjust it if you want. the new front of the tree and as you can see we can see all the, the tops of the foliage they're all ready to show us their flowers next season beautiful and lovely
been a couple months since we've last seen the gardenia. It's been a matter of seconds for y'all. But as I looked at it, I wasn't too happy with the styling. I liked the wiring. I liked some of the branches. But when I got it home, I looked at it a little bit more and it just wasn't what I wanted. And then it came to me, let's do a windswept. So I took it, did some work with it, got it to look like this. This here is called a windswept style. Well, for obvious reasons, almost looks like if I blow on it, looks like it's been windswept. So I'm pretty happy with the way that this turns out or is turning out. And I think a good front of it would be right about there or so, somewhere around here. A little, see the wind is not necessarily going left to right, but maybe front to back a little bit as well. I don't know. Cause we've got this long little guy right here that's kind of hanging out. Being blown on. Oh, I'm pretty happy with this. So we're gonna take the cameras in so that you can get a better look at it. another bonsai yeah in the books. If you guys like our content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. You could like, you could comment, you could share to your friends. Either way, have a wonderful day. Be cool, stay hip, get yourself a hobby. Till next time.